right, guys, welcome back to the Pepsi Global Star League. This is Kodas. I am Wolf, and with me is in un Instable, Unstable, Same thing, Destable, really. Destabilizer. Keep going. Is that your new how, many, idea? how many can you get? Restabilize? <laughs> <laughs> good effort, good effort. That's all right. So, up next, we are going to have Top versus Genius coming up. Both of these guys did take out their first matches. So they did? Actually, it's, I think it's going to favor Genius a little bit. He did just well, play a yeah, PvT. Yeah, he played a PvT really well. Mm -hmm. he two is, mana His nexus. style, you know, you don't, you hardly ever see a DT expand that doesn't do any damage. I mean, it, it's an expansion build. If it mm -hmm. doesn't do damage, it's okay, but you're, you're definitely behind a little bit. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do any damage at all and just played beautifully afterwards. Yeah. The two racks, Pressure didn't do any damage either, and that's not necessarily the most economically friendly build either. No. But even so, he had a really strong army. And Genius just kind of kept him in his base, forced him to use a lot of scans, and every scan used is t approximately 270 minerals. Each mule gathers about 270 minerals, and those 270 minerals are, are important at that moment. They're gathered over a 30 second period of time. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very important, every mule drop is very important. I'll just, that, that's the bottom line. I'm giving you the bottom <laughs> line here. Every mule drop is important. Every time you have to scan, that's one mule you're not using. Mm -hmm. that's I, really know, I, I think it DTs. came down to the upgrades. Uh, yeah, Genius had a lot of upgrades that game. Uh, yeah, he had the, the drop, the drop that uh, the virus tried to do, didn't really do that much damage at all. Like we saw, it was going straight past all those tech structures. He could have stopped that speed, zealot speed from going down, but he just wasn't looking at yeah, the yeah. right time. And I really think that one tiny thing could have changed a lot. Yeah, not only that, but he actually had a nice little spot where if he dropped behind the Twilight Council, mm -hmm. the zealots would have been able to attack one Marauder at a time, and that <laughs> would have been really bad. That one Marauder just getting healed. Oh man, that would have been bad. But mm -hmm. didn't happen like that. The drops were good, but when the DTs are out, how often do you really want to drop? You have to scan every time you drop. Uh, it's expensive. You, if you lose your units, you get behind. Yeah. You just don't want to do it. That's right, though. Playing safe, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think it just came down to two things. like That drop we were just talking about and the initial engagement in the middle where those Archons came into play. I think it was a great choice by Genius, not just keeping high Templars to let them en get more energy, but actually turning them into Archons, because they are so much more effective than people think. Yeah, they really are. I actually wasn't sure that engagement was going to go as well as it did for Genius, because it was kind of at a weird choke point where I didn't think the Zealots were going to be able to run around. But like you said, the Archons just did so much damage. And the key thing about that also was the Ghost died. And that yes, was it. There were no more true. Ghosts for a, a period of time. And he didn't make them immediately. He had to get a round of units out first. Then he started the Ghost, and they just... When you don't have ghosts against Archons, it gets pretty nasty. He even yeah. had the Guardian Shield up, he had plus two armor. He did get a couple of EMPs off throughout the, throughout it all, but it just comes down to the, there just weren't enough EMPs. And it didn't help that he had almost killed those two Archons as well. Like, they were at yeah, like 20 Yeah, that's also health. a really good point. Yeah, the Archons were very, very low on shields, and obviously Archons have just 10 hit points. <laughs> that plus two armor doesn't mean a whole lot when... <laughs> You only have 10 hit points and the rest are all in shields because the armor doesn't get applied until you actually get down to the hit points. So a lot yep. of people don't know that actually about Protoss units. So, you know, like, well, plus two armor, that's a lot. Well, it doesn't really affect until you yeah. get down to the shields. So. That's what the shield upgrade's for. Yeah. You gotta use that. People don't get the shield <laughs> upgrade, it's true. I actually was doing this build against Zergs where I'd get the shield upgrade fast because I thought, because I did this, it was a long time ago, and okay. I did this build <laughs> where it was a, it was a Phoenix, it was a, like a Phoenix 4 gate all in. It's before people found out the sport crawlers were good, man. <laughs> that's back. It's also back when people weren't really using queens a lot. Okay, so this this was early. It's beta. bad. It's bad. Okay, don't do okay. it. Don't do it. Don't <laughs> don't go like. Well, Wolf told me you could get plus one shields and do this timing. No, don't do. Just don't do it. It's bad. Don't do it. Starcraft one. Don't do it either. It's not. <laughs> maybe get a shield battery in Starcraft one if someone's all inning you and you have that one dragoon you're micing around. Otherwise, probably don't really want a shield battery either. Maybe in PvP. Maybe, but I don't know. I played Terran in Starcraft one. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking about anymore. I'm just talking anymore. about shields, man. <laughs> shields are good. All right. Archons are good. <laughs> There's going to be a new upgrade in the expansion. It's going to be like it's going to be called a planetary nexus. And, and if you stand next to it, your shields recharge really fast. That's what it's going to be like. <laughs> just wait. All right. I think we're going into game in, in a minute now. There's going to be OGS top with MVP genius, Towering Alter. There they are on screen now. What happens when Top's macro collides with Genius's unpredictable style? The what game crashes. Then? The game crashes? <laughs> I hope not. 
We've had that happen a few times in the GSL. Do you remember Damaga versus, I think it was MVP? No, unfortunately, I was dragged to dinner with my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was a long game. There were Infestors, Neural Parasites, Siege Tanks, Ultralis, Planetaries all over the map. It's like a 60-minute game. Boom, game crashes. Impossible <laughs> to determine who was ahead. It was awful. Uh, all right, the countdown is starting, guys. Who's going to take first in this group? Will it be Topper? Will it be Genius? Let's find out here on Taldery Malter. The eliminated maps are Terminus Re and Crevasse. Genius does not like Crevasse. He doesn't. No. I don't like it either. I don't You're just picking. I am a little bit picky. <laughs> so the map's loading up here. We're going to jump into it in just a second. I am Wolf. With me is Unstable. We're here at the Pepsi Global Star League Codes. This is Group C. Alright, down here at the bottom left, a member of the team OGS. Got a lot of fans here in Mokdong. A pretty young guy. He's played well in the GSL ever since he's been in it, since Open Season 1. His name is... OGS Pep! She's got three rings on. <laughs> They're all different colors. His opponent, down here at the bottom right, a Protoss player, member of the team, MVP. MVP, Jinya. Gosh, she was, I just want to make that joke. I want to be like, he's pretty smart. Some might even say he was a... And then she's just like, no, I'm just going to tell you what he is. <laughs> All right, so there are a lot of different options on this map. There this are. is another map where PBT, there's almost, you can do almost anything. You can command center first. No, you can't. You can't really do that. But you could. I've seen it before. It doesn't work, but you can. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of options. The spawning points on this map as well would play a lot into what strategy you can and cannot use. That's true. And right off the bat, Genius is going to find out those spawning points are pretty close here. It looks like Top is going to be going for a one barracks expand, a gasless expand. Mm -hmm. And of course, immediately, Top is also going to turn his SCV around, realizing close spawns, it's got to be. He actually yeah. isn't turning his SCV around, but he should realize at this point that because the probe is here so soon, it can't be any other position. Yep. There's that Cybernetic score going down. I think we're most likely going to see a one gate expand from Genius, but scouting no gas here may trigger him to be very aggressive. Yeah. Well, we have seen a couple of uh, punishing builds come in from him about some one racks expand builds as well. So it really comes down to how he wants to play with it. He needs yeah. to get back in there and see what's going on in a minute. He'll probably send his probe back in about 20, 30 seconds. Oh, there we go. We do have a command center. Command center going down and immediately one gas. Mm. Not two gases, though. Interesting. A little bit different than usual. Top trying to find a scouting probe. Now, the second gas has gone down for Genius. Genius has been known to sometimes just get extremely aggressive and go yep. five gate with mostly sentries off the two gas. His opponent's going to come in here he's going to think, that's a little weird. You know, this map is not the map where you do a two gas into an expansion after you scout that I did a one rax expand. That's a little weird. So he might be ready for something. I think Genius is going to pull something weird. Yeah. Well, I don't believe he's actually seen the command center, but it was implied by the no gas. Exactly. I mean, there's another option, hidden barracks. There is. But most likely, when he sees that, he's going to know it's going to well, be a command center. If you, ha if you kept your eye on his probe, it actually went around a lot in the middle of the map as well. So I don't think he's going to be scared of anything like that. We do we see a second gateway go down. Oh, third gateway. Yeah, he's, How many more are we going to see? He scared the SCV out. Mm -hmm. Now he is going up to just three gates, but again, this is very unusual. You don't normally see a three gate expand like this in reply to someone who's not being aggressive at all, because usually you try to do as few gateways as possible, get the next up as fast as possible. Yep. You make the three gates just to be safe. You know, you never really know if Top's going to two racks you again, unless you scouted that he's not going to two racks you. Yeah. A little bit weird. So that warp gate research is finishing up. Those gateways getting closer as well, and I don't think. Oh, oh I take it back. Yes! Here's the five gate. Oh! <laughs> this is the build I love to see coming in from Genius. He's doing it. He does this. He just does this sometimes. You guys don't know Genius like I do. He gave me an MVP <laughs> shirt. I talked to him at the Code qualifiers. We're close. We're friends. I knew he was gonna do it. Oh, he does get this stalker caught though. He did see the uh, the the, 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 the bunker. 
the bunker at the front, so he's going to know that this expand is coming now, definitely. And why don't you, why don't you go and explain this build, what we're about All right, to see. so basically what you do with this build is you make mostly sentries out of your warp gaze. Right now, Genius has three sentries. The third sentry just popped. Warp gate research is done. You make mostly sentries, and because you're making sentries, you bank up a little bit of minerals, you add some extra gateways. Then, once you have... You just use those gateways to make purely sentries, and then eventually you start making zealots and stalkers. Mm -hmm. What you do is you kind of sit outside your opponent's ramp. He doesn't really know what's going on. But just to cut you off. No, he's not going up that ramp. Yeah, he saw too many sentries. doesn't want to engage that. Yeah. But once you have all those sentries out, your opponent doesn't know exactly what's going on. Right now, yep. he might assume it's just a sentry expand. He might think it's a five gate. But either way, you attack. Your opponent makes a bunch of bunkers. Top is reacting properly, has made three bunkers. Mm -hmm. The problem is, when you attack, you just pull back, and he's got a bunch of SCVs that aren't mining, and then you yep. get a little bit weirded out. As you can see, he can warp in five zealots. He's got the minerals banked up to do that. He yep. got the earlier sentries. He's building up sentry energy. This is going to be pretty scary. It is. Beyond lost to a player, uh, I can't remember who it was, in the Super Tournament, yes. to this very build. Genius actually took Slayer's box out with a similar build. The best as part well. about this is you can just keep waiting, and you just bait them out. You make him think something's going on. He's got those three bunkers. He doesn't have as, that many as many units as he wants to, though. Here we go. He's going to go forward. He's got the putting the pile on very forward as well. See, he's here's a lot the thing. Of energy. You just delay the attack, and you yeah. try to get your opponent to pull SCVs, and then he eventually just says, "Oh, he's not going to do it." And then you just go and you do here it. Here we go. So he's and moving he forward now. He's actually not even going to wait for the sentries. He's got all these units. Oh, great force fields coming in now from Genius. One bunker goes down. The second one is almost done. There's a lot of zealots here. All these units caught at the front. There are more zealots being warped in at the back as well. He hasn't gotten the third bunker. Though. There it goes. We got all these SEVs being pulled. The Marines at the back are doing the best they can to focus down these zealots. Needs to be careful. He is repairing that bunker as best he can, but Genius forced to pull back. He has killed a lot of the units, but the bunker does stay up. And again, there is a closer forward pile, and he's going to continue to warp in units there. Genius cannot really support all of these gateways, just warping in whenever he can. Mm -hmm. He's trying to decide what kind of units he's warping in. He's avoiding making stalkers, just making sentries and zealots. Yep. There are about four or five SCVs waiting near that bunker, but if he gets some good force fields off, he will push them away. And here we go, there's a lot of a lot of SCVs there. Genius going in, he's not force fielding just yet. There we go, nice! He's gone put in between the gas geyser and the command center. The zealots are doing the work on all those marines. I'm not sure if Genius has enough units yet though. These all of his marines have dropped. He's gonna get that bunker. The bunker goes down, there is a marauder in there as well that drops extremely quickly. It's going to be close, it's going to be it! All I the SCVs are done! I think that's it, man! It's and only, oh, Marine tries to get in and he's stuck there, out. he can't even shoot anything! He is dead, man! Top is dead! Genius doing the 5 gate build that he's known for! You never know what to expect from this guy! He crushes through here, he does a delayed attack! GG! We knew that was coming. I knew it, man! I was just like... <laughs> He's not making the five gates. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> then he makes them. I was like, ah! He's drinking that Gatorade. I haven't tasted mine yet. Is it any good? It is really good. Of you course it's it. good. Of course it's good. Let's find out. Look at that. Did you see Genius drink that Gatorade? He's, he's just down that. He Whoa. Like, he drank all of it. Worked very hard today. He's actually done. Two owed his group. Yeah. Comes out in the first seed. Top. Looking a little bit puzzled about how that he's actually got that, He's got that look on his face. It's like the little emoticon that you have. The eyes are just like... Mm. It's like <laughs> equals underscore equals. Like he's just really mad. <laughs> Making a little face there. But don't worry. He's still got a shot to get second place in the group. He stays in Code S definitely. Yeah, it just absolutely. depends if he advances the round of 16 or not. He will go up against the winner of our next match. Which is yeah. going to be... Which is going to be... The virus versus... Fruit dealer. Fruit dealer, that's right. Yeah. I keep forgetting about fruit dealer. He's so changed. He's not the fruit dealer <laughs> I remember. I'm like, who's that scary guy who's got a little scruff with his makeup on? He just looks like an evil villain. And I'm like, who is that guy? He's like, it's fruit dealer. The hero zerg, you know, the guy that gave everyone hope. I'm like, really? Really? Yeah. All right, so what map are we going to be playing on next, Wolf? We are going to be playing on Metalopolis. Metalopolis? Yeah. Metalopolis, this could, this, this the GSL Metalopolis. Yeah, this could work well for fruit dealer. It's, it's not the worst map he could possibly get because they are random. He can only veto one map and the rest is all random as well. So exactly. it's not like a lot of other tournaments where you get two or three vetoes and you just definitely get rid of all the maps that you don't like. There is a possibility you can get a map that doesn't really play well to your style here. Yeah, so it, I like forces, that. it forces a lot of different exactly. styles. I like it. It forces a lot of different styles. It forces a lot of different practice. Mm -hmm. You have to be prepared for anything because you just don't know. I mean, you get told what you're going to practice on, but you don't yeah. know exactly what map you're going to fall on necessarily. 
So a lot of different various things go into that. And before you're told your map, you get told usually at the beginning of the week that your match is. So yeah. before that, you want to practice because you know who your opponent is, but you don't necessarily know what map you're going to end up on. So it makes it very difficult to pick a specific strategy for a certain map. Everyone has their strategies. Like Genius' strategy is only good on Taldry Malter. Yeah. It's actually the only map you'll ever see that strategy on. Mm -hmm. And only uh, the top, both top or do both bottom positions as yeah, well. Yeah. You can't you, really do it. You on won't the other do it at cross positions. No. I mean, you can, but it's just more difficult to get your pylon yeah. in there because you've got to go all the way around with your probe. More chances of being scouted. Exactly. Uh, it's just a lot more risk involved. And if you've already put down those five gateways and your probe's killed, ah, uh, ah, uh. <laughs> that's all I can say. So when you do that attack. You wait. You notice the genius waited. He didn't. It's not like the four gate where you just get your first round of units and then you attack and then you warp in more and it's very timing oriented. Like I gotta go now. This is the one timing. It's different. You only do this when your opponent's doing a gasless expand. Then you you go and if he makes three bunkers, it's okay. Yep. You just don't attack right away because that's when he's gonna have all his SCVs waiting there. Then you wait and he's like, maybe all's wrong. Maybe he's not doing the five gate. I'm gonna put my SCV back. And then you just go. You just go. There, you go. there are our players up on screen. Freaky looking a little bit more nervous than the last game. Yeah, he looks, uh, he's pouting a little bit. He's, I gotta say, Fruit Dealer, I worry about this guy. He's wearing a Terran shirt today, not a TSL shirt. He also wasn't announced as TSL earlier. What does it mean? <laughs> does, does everyone know something that I don't know? Like, was that announced earlier? Maybe. Because I know that it was announced earlier that uh, SKS and Songho were leaving TSL, but I... Didn't know about this guy. You're back. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, was was Fruit Dealer announced as leaving? I'm actually serious. I didn't hear that. I'm serious. Stop trolling. Yes, he was announced at the same time. Oh, was he at the same time as them? I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. Like, I'm 100% serious. <laughs> Everyone's like looking at me like. Stop making bad jokes. <laughs> no, I just didn't know that. I'm sorry. So I don't pay more attention to the scene. I don't surf TL as much as I used to, man. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the countdown has started. It's going to be Virus versus Fruit Dealer. The loser's playing off. This is a very important match. The loser goes to the up and downs. The map is Metalopolis. I am Wolf, and with me is Unstable. This is the Pepsi Global StarCraft 2 League. Let's get into it. 